station. This is Houston. Are you ready for the event? Houston, this is station. We are ready for the event. Houston ACR, this is Mission Control Houston. Please call station for voice check. Station, this is Houston ACR. How do you hear me? Houston ACR, good morning. I have you loud and clear, homie. Loud and clear, thank you. Please stand by for opening remarks. Welcome and thank you for joining us today. I'm Jorge Samanillo, Director of the Smithsonian's National Museum of American Latino. Did you know that Latinos and Latinos have contributed to the long legacy of space exploration? Franklin Shang Diaz and Elena Shoa were the first Latino and Latinos to go to space. Diana Trujillo, Cristina Hernandez, and Clara O'Farrell helped lead the Mars Perseverance rover team. And Frank Rubio continues that legacy on the International Space Station. We're excited to collaborate with NASA and have many questions, but let's get started. Hi, my name is Malachi, and my question is, what is it like being in microgravity? Hey, Malachi. Uh, you know, being in microgravity is a lot of fun, uh, mostly because you get to float around. So you can float up and back down really easily. Uh, you can stand sideways and answer questions like this. Uh, so it just makes it a lot more fun and a very interesting uh, environment to work in. Hi, my name is Ben. And my question is, how do you not get too hot or too cold in the spacesuit? Hey, Ben, you know, that's a great question. And our spacesuit is really an engineering marvel. It's basically a personal little spacecraft. Uh, it keeps you pressurized in the vacuum of space. It provides you with oxygen. It cleans out the carbon dioxide that you breathe out. And it also keeps you comfortable. Uh, we provide our own heat because when we're working out there, your body produces a lot of heat. And inside of the spacesuit, uh, you can stay really warm. And so sometimes you, ha you need uh, cooling. And we have what's called a liquid cooling uh, and ventilation garment. And that's basically something that you wear right over your body and underneath the spacesuit. And it uses water that flows over a sublimator plate. And so this plate is essentially exposed to vacuum. And we run water over that. And the sublimating water provides cooling uh, for the water that's running through your LCVG. And that's how we stay cool out there. The nice thing is that we have a small little controller that we use, and we can control our own temperature and make ourselves either warmer or colder as needed while we're out doing spacewalks. Hi, my name is Caleb Watley, and my question is, have you encountered an asteroid? Hey, Caleb. You know what? Unfortunately, we have not encountered an asteroid. But actually, I should say fortunately, because at this orbit, uh, we're only 250 miles above the Earth. And so if we were um, to encounter an asteroid at this altitude, it would mean, uh, likely mean that it's about to strike the Earth or that it's a near miss. So it's probably a really good thing that we haven't encountered an asteroid on the International Space Station. Hi, my name is Fernanda Singer, and my question is, what are the benefits of doing medical research instead of doing it on Earth? Hey, Fernanda, you know, that's a great question, especially for me as a doctor, uh, because we can really study some pretty cool things up here and develop some pretty cool technology. One of the things that we do is uh, look at the way proteins develop in microgravity. Uh, because of the lack of gravity and other forces like convection or settling, uh, we can form really high quality crystals. And someday we can use those uh, crystal structures to make better medicines to help all of humanity back on Earth. Uh, the other thing that we see up here is that microgravity and the radiation environment that we uh, are exposed to up here has uh, very similar effects to some of the things that we see in the process of aging, like uh, bone density loss or muscle density loss. Uh, but those processes happen much faster up here in space. And so by studying them up here, we can hopefully find uh, ways to better deal with them back on Earth and help uh, all of our population. Hi, my name is Hector Emanuel Venzor Marquez. My question is, what is the most difficult thing to do in space? 
Hey, Hector. Well, actually, back to the previous question about bone density loss and muscle density loss. And so the most strenuous thing we do most days is actually work out. Uh, we do a lot of resistance exercise, and we use that to keep our bones uh, and our muscles strong. Uh, but probably the hardest thing that we do is our spacewalks. Uh, we're out there for anywhere for six to eight hours, and the spacesuit, even though it doesn't weigh a lot, still has a lot of mass, and so it's really hard to move. Uh, but uh, the views that you get to experience out there and the fun job that you get to do and being part of the, some of the amazing things that we work, work on as a team uh, make it all very worthwhile. Hello, my name is Genesis Coelho, and my question is, does space have a certain smell or taste? Hey, Genesis. Uh, you know, actually, some people say that when a spacecraft docks to the International Space Station, there's a very peculiar smell. And that's because we think because of some of the uh, ionized uh, metal reactions that happen with uh, metal that's exposed to the environment of space and it kind of smells like burnt chicken. Uh, but otherwise, everything else here on the space station smells pretty much like it does back er on Earth. Uh, when we cook our food or make our food, uh, it smells just like what we have back on Earth. And uh, yeah, it's really, uh, it smells like uh, our home. Hi, my name is Fort Reino, and my question is, you have to be in good shape to be selected as an astronaut. So what exercises can you do to stay in good shape while on the International Space Station? Hey, Ford, like I said, uh, being in good shape actually really helps you uh, to both function up here on the International Space Station and also when you return to Earth, have a higher level of function uh, sooner if you stay in pretty good shape. And so up here, we do a lot of resistance exercise on a machine called ARED, and it uses two vacuum uh, cylinders to provide resistance uh, because we really can't lift weights, right? We're in microgravity, and so it would be way too easy if we just try to lift weights. Uh, and so we use that resistance uh, to simulate lifting weights back on Earth. And then we also have a stationary bike. Uh, and the fun thing about that uh, stationary bike, which, which is called Cebus, is that it doesn't have a seat. And that's because we don't need to support our upper body because we're just kind of floating there. And so we just clip into the pedals and uh, pedal like a normal bike minus the seat. And uh, you get a really good workout there. We also have a treadmill, uh, but like I said, anytime you move up here, you tend to bounce a lot. And so to keep us down on the treadmill, we use a harness and really strong bungees to keep us clipped uh, to the frame of the treadmill. And as we run, that harness and bungee uh, keeps us grounded, and we're able to get a really good workout there too. Hi, my name is Eileen Sanchez. My question is, can you demonstrate a flip and tell us how hard it is to do, in, to do that in space? Hey, Lean. Yeah, like, like I said, uh, moving up here in space is a lot of fun. So you can do fun things like a pirouette. Or you can do a flip. Now, I'm not very good at flips, but we're going to try one. And the key is that you have to, to um, control your up and down motion while you flip. So let's try it. And you can see, I put a little bit too upward uh, motion uh, for my flip, but I got back okay. Hi, my name is Mariana Orellana, and I have a question. Tell us a time when being in space was life-changing or very inspiring, and how that changed your view of space travel and the value of scientific research. Hey, Mariana, you know, I think the entire, uh, experience of being on the International Space Station, of launching on a rocket, of getting to do spacewalks, uh, all those things have been incredibly inspiring uh, to me personally. One of the things that actually inspires me the most is actually looking down on our beautiful planet every day. Uh, we get to look out this window and see the beautiful uh, and mesmerizing colors that make up our Earth. Uh, that's one of my favorite things to do. And so uh, what it, it has inspired in me is a love for our planet, and making sure that I um, do my best to take care of it so that my kids and my grandkids can hopefully enjoy the same beauty that I've been able to enjoy. Hi, my name is Eric Siles Enojosa, 
And my question is, what does it feel like when you go up to space? Hey, Eric, uh, you know what? When you launch in that rocket, it is a once in a lifetime experience. Uh, there's a lot of power because rocket fuel um, gets you going really fast, really quick. Uh, and it's pretty neat to go from zero to over 15,000 miles an hour in less than 10 minutes. Uh, and so it was pretty exhilarating, a lot of fun. Um, and you know, the, the, the cool thing was that I wasn't nearly as nervous as I thought I would be. And that's because I had excellent training. I have um, excellent training teams that prepare you for all of this. And so once you're in the rocket, your training kicks in and you're focused on making sure that everything's going right. And even when you get up to uh, the space station, you feel like you're walking into your home because you've trained so well. And so uh, overall, it's been an incredibly cool and fun experience. Hi, my name is Suyemi Cortez Cardenas, and my question is, how is training different between men and women? Hey, Suyemi, uh, you know, the cool thing is that the training is uh, pretty much exactly the same. And that's because we have some incredibly capable men and women uh, in the astronaut corps and so I have the pleasure of working some with some incredible women who are just as capable and just as uh, able if not more so in a lot of ways uh, than I am uh, which is really cool because as a father of four and three of my kids are daughters it's really neat that they can uh, not only look up to their mother but also look up to all these amazing women that I get to work with and um, use them as role models hi my name is Nelson Solano, and my question to you is, when you were an astronaut, what was your first day on the job like? Hey, Nelson, uh, you know, that first day on the job just really felt like a big dream. Uh, it was really a dream come true to become an astronaut. I never thought I would be, to be honest. And so once you get selected, uh, you feel incredibly blessed, uh, incredibly humbled, uh, because again, there's so many amazing people that try out, and any any of them could make uh, incredible astronauts. And so um, it was a huge blessing, and you kind of feel like you're walking on a cloud uh, for the first several hundred days, to be honest. Uh, but that first day was really special. Uh, one of the most special things about it is that you actually get to meet uh, the other people that you're going to be working with for the next 10, 15, 20 years. Uh, and those are your classmates in your astronaut class. And they are uh, some pretty amazing people who have now become some of my best friends. And so being able to get to meet them was super exciting. And uh, having been able to work with them for the past six years has been an incredible experience. Hi, my name is Dominic Gazame. And my question is, what are some cool things you can do with water in space? Hey, Dominic, I'm glad you asked. Uh, I'll show you instead of telling you. So we have to drink a lot of water in space, and that's because um, it's really important to stay hydrated, both in space and on Earth. Now, without gravity, it can get kind of messy. So I'm going to make a bubble of water, and you're going to see that it's just going to kind of float in front of us. I have a towel with me because it, ca it, it can get kind of messy. And as you can see, we have a lot of electronics, so we don't want water just floating around the space station. Now, the cool thing is it would just sit here and float all day, but we do have a lot of airflow uh, to make sure that our air stays pure. And so you'll see it floating away in the airflow. But if I blow just right, you can affect which way the bubble goes. All right, hopefully you got to enjoy that. Let's drink it up. Hi, my name is Melissa Moreno. My question is, in your opinion, what is the most mesmerizing thing you've seen in space from the space station?
Hey, Melissa. Uh, you know, the most mesmerizing thing that I've seen, I think, is really <clears throat> our beautiful planet, the Earth. Um, the colors are just so incredible. And it's also, uh, I think, from this perspective, it really gives you an appreciation for how much of our planet is covered in water. Uh, the, the Pacific Ocean, especially, is just so vast. And even though we're flying at 17,500 miles an hour up here, it takes a long time to fly over the Pacific Ocean because it's so big. And so seeing all that water together, uh, seeing all the different shades of blue that make up the ocean has uh, really been a beautiful thing that I think I'm going to remember for the rest of my life. Hi, my name is Natalia Landaverde. My question is, what can I do to place myself on a path for a career that one day will allow me to live and work at the International Space Station? Hey, Natalia, we would love to have you and lots of other uh, talented young people up here on the International Space Station someday. Uh, and so to become a NASA astronaut, it's really uh, not that hard. One, you have to be a US citizen. Uh, we do want you to have studied in STEM, so science, technology, engineering, or math. Uh, and you can uh, have either a bachelor's or a master's degree in that field. Uh, and that's because uh, just uh, the whole space travel uh, and act of being an astronaut requires a lot of that mathematics and science background. But uh, the cool thing is you can get that background in lots of different jobs. We have engineers, we have scientists, uh, we have different types of pilots, both helicopter pilots and jet pilots. Uh, we have doctors, um, and we all make uh, great explorers. I think the number one thing that you really need to work on, though, is being a great team player. Uh, and the way to demonstrate that and all the other skills that you might bring as an astronaut is just to find a career that you love and that you can be passionate about, and then go out there and do your absolute best at that job. And then someday, uh, hopefully, NASA will say, hey, we need you to come up here and be an astronaut so that you can go explore space. Hello, my name is Michelle Oliver, and my question is, what is it like to continue the legacy of Latinos and Latinas in space exploration? Hey, Michelle, it is an incredible honor to be a Latino up here on the International Space Station. You know, Latinos have contributed so much to our country, both as scientists, engineers, as artists, as explorers, as athletes, our community just makes an incredible uh, contribution to our country every day. Uh, and I think one of the biggest things that we've brought is our culture. And we've brought our culture to the incredible uh, melting pot that is the American uh, culture. And that mix has just brought a lot of flavor and a lot of fun. Uh, and it, for me, it's uh, both incredibly humbling, a privilege, and an honor to be up here representing uh, our community. On behalf of the Latino Museum and everyone watching today, I want to thank NASA and the space station crew for answering our questions. We look forward to working with you again. Thanks so much, Jorge. Take care. Station, this is Houston ACR. That concludes the event. Thank you. Thank you to all participants. Station, we are now resuming operational audio communications.